So my Lakeland Provincial Park canoe circuit trip started with a trip from Calgary up through Edmonton to Lac La Biche. And just to the east of Lac La Biche is the lakes for the uh, canoe circuit. Uh, now I'll just give an overview of the, uh, of the itinerary that I had. So Lac La Biche would be over here. And then you drive this road right here up to the Jackson Lake staging area. And you park there. And then the first task um, is to portage on the Jackson Lake Trail for three kilometers. And there's carts provided, which are excellent carts and the portage to the lake right there. That took me just under an hour to get there. Um, then I canoed through here, down through here to this bridge. That took another hour paddling. This area in here was extremely large waves. And so this section right here was very, very difficult to get to that bridge, but I figured out a way. And then once across the bridge, it was fine, nice and calm. And I canoed down to here and I stayed right there on Kennard Island. And that took another hour there. So in total, about three hours from the staging area to that island. And that was, um, 10 kilometers total. Then on day two, I canoed down this way and I went down around this point and I went down this creek this way into Blackett Lake and around this bend. And then I camped on this island right there. That was around uh, 10 kilometers as well. And that took a couple of hours paddling. Then on day three, um, I paddled around this way. This is the longest day. Went around this way, went this way, around here, went over here. And then I shot across Blackett Lake like this. Uh, did this portage, which was only 1.6 kilometers, but it was brutal. And uh, that ended up taking me an hour and a half, that portage. And then I canoed through here like this, like this, and then I camped right there. And that whole leg was about 12 kilometers. And I'm gonna say took about uh, probably three hours. That, that was an hour and a half. That was um, half an hour there, and then probably about an hour there, maybe a little bit more, but around that. And so right there, that would have been uh, night three on that one. And then for the final leg, I canoed across MacGuffin Lake to here, did this short portage right here, paddled through these lagoons right here, and went across like this to Jackson Lake Peninsula, and I camped there on my fourth night. And again, that probably took... Um, Probably not quite two hours for that stretch there. It was pretty, pretty leisurely day. And then the final leg of this trip, um, I shot across the lake this way. Actually had breakfast right there. And then I made my way back up the way I started. So it was a four night, um, I guess five day trip. So let's take a look at some of the uh, footage. Okay, here I am. It's about 1.45. I have made it to Jackson Lake, Jackson Lake staging area. And I just get here, 1.45. And the first thing I see is warning barren area. Great. Um, other than that, I was a little worried about, you know, a lot of people on the lake and not getting campsites, but that's not going to be the case, it looks like. Right now, there's only four other cars here. So now I'm just going to walk down the path here to grab a cart. By the way, these carts are awesome. They are really good quality. Uh, and I know I can tow the boat by myself really easily with them because I took the kids out here some years back, me and the kids. and I ended up pulling the boat by myself with them sitting in the sitting on the cart a lot of the time too. I think I'm all packed here. Got a couple of oars, baler, rope, front and back. 
got a seat to sit on down here, my life jacket. In this bag's got my tent and sleeping pad and sleeping bag. And I think a tarp too, in case it rains, which it's supposed to over the days a little bit. Food's all in here and an extra dry bag like this one. In the case I need to throw this backpack into the extra dry bag, it'll fit right in there. And in here is all my kind of utensil stuff, uh, cooking pots and pans and that type of stuff. And then the rope on the front. And one thing you do got to bring is your own straps, which I suppose you'd have because you're transporting your canoe. But you need those, so I'm going to opt for this blue one here. I'm going to tighten that up. And other than that, I'm off for a three kilometer trek to the lake. So I'm about a kilometer in, maybe. One thing the kids will find really interesting about this is that there's no mosquitoes. Last time me and the kids did this, this was what we dubbed Mosquito Alley and Freya had hundreds <laughs> of mosquito bites on her and I ended up scratching her back all night in the tent because there were so many bites and she was so itchy but anyways so far so good no mosquitoes at all so I'm a little bit concerned about that okay I made it pretty breezy but the lagoon's not not choppy a little worried when we get out of the lagoon how choppy it'll be, but I guess it is what it is. There's another family, two boats, probably a mom and dad, and a couple of kids that just left the dock, so I'll have some company for sure. Of the four cars in the parking lot, though, two people left, uh, two separate people, so certainly won't be a lot of us out here. So here I am at the transition from Jackson Lake to Kennard Lake. Uh, it took me quite a while to fight some massive waves on the Jackson Lake side, but the Kennard Lake side was pretty calm. Okay, I made it out of that crazy wind on Jackson Lake. I don't know if that family made it. I passed a family with two canoes. They were sure struggling. Well, I was sure struggling too. Got all wet. The rain boots got wet. I had to bail out the boat just because the waves were so big. But I managed to get through it and get to this lake and out of the wind. So, from where I'm headed is that island right in front of us there. I can actually see a white sign, I think, for the campground. Beautiful out now, though. Okay, well, here's my first campground I'm checking out. I'll probably stay here, but I might check out another one. There's another one just around the corner. There's the toilet. I'm not going to have to worry about stink too much from that one. Or flies. Let's see. There's the bear hang. I wish they put lockers in. Lockers are a lot more easier than a bear hang. But anyways, I'll be using that. What I don't like is that bear hanging is awful close to the tent pad. That's kind of worrisome. Anyways, that's a nice spot for sure. There's no bugs, but if there was, there's a nice breeze off the lake here. And I guess that's the only tent pad. There's not really a lot of other... big fire pit for one tent pad. I suppose a person could pitch more tents here, but it wouldn't be very level, that's for sure. Okay, take three. I've got a rock on here now. That'll hold it. Stick didn't have enough weight.
stuff hung and ran into more problems. That frickin' Tupperware bin's too heavy right now. So I had to change the rope to a thicker rope. One that was more slippery actually, that rope's quite slippery. Because I couldn't get the other one to slide on the pole up there to drag it up. And then I'm getting kind of nervous about my cooking utensils because I had curry. So I put the pot and utensils up there just to be safe. All right, well that uh, thunderstorm brought a crazy bolt of lightning that scared the hell out of me. A little bit of rain, didn't rain too bad. Just starting to slow down now. Anyways, once that rain stops, I am gonna make some supper. I was just following a trail from my campsite, and I found another campsite on the other side of this island. I think it's even nicer, but anyways, the best part is, I'm not going to move at this point, but the best part is I got some wood. I'm going to snag that stuff. I got a beaver or something swimming there. It must be a beaver. It's too big at this distance for a muskrat. Uh, anyways, ran into my first problem here. I went to go pump some water in my filter. Well, Brian's filter. And it was cracked down the side. And it wasn't working. So I duct taped it up. But unfortunately... That didn't work because it seems to be leaking from the bottom. Somewhere in there. I can't duct tape that. I think it's up in the crack or something. So I got a bit of a problem. Uh, I'll have to boil all my water, I guess. I do have another filter just for drinking straight from the lake, but it's not really good for pumping larger amounts of water. So I'm going to have to boil water which hopefully I have enough fuel. Jeez, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a problem. Anyways, I'll survive somehow. Okay, morning, I guess one, it's a Monday morning. Woke up to a pretty beautiful morning. Uh, last night was, I don't know, interesting. I got some sleep, let's put it that way. <laughs> a lot of noises out here, let's put it, put it that way. <laughs> a lot of noises. Anyways, just charging my phone now, but I think I'm good. I'm gonna hit the water. It is quarter to nine in the morning and here's how I'm charging my phone and I gotta say it works pretty good I just came into a little nook here with a whole bunch of ducks there's a pelican there and there's a stork right off the tip of the canoe there it's hard to see I'm gonna see if I can get closer that's an old boat right there must have got away from somebody these guys are loud. Whatever those are. Okay, so today I got a little bit of a tailwind, just a light breeze, which is kind of nice. So I'm gonna keep heading south now. I can't remember the names of the lakes, but keep heading south to the part. Pretty much, the, I'll be at the farthest point from the launch, I guess, today, probably, if all goes well. Which means tomorrow I'll start making my way. So here I am making my way through the channel from Canard Lake to Blackett Lake. Pelican. I 
Okay, I uh, made it to this island on Blackett Lake. So I'm just checking out the campsite. I mean, it's only 11 a.m. Took me two hours to get here from the last spot, so I might keep going. But I might hang out here. It's a pretty nice spot, actually. Anyways, I'll have lunch at the very least and then make a decision. But I, I realize I can make pretty good time when I'm by myself. So... Well, this one's kind of concerning. There's no... There's no bear hanger. Food hanger or lockers. But it is an island. But still, there's like elk poop all over it. So animals have no problems getting here. mind except I just know when nightfall comes I start getting freaked out so I'll have to make a careful decision here hmm. okay well the weather got a little better I was getting a little bit nervous about rain but it kind of cleared up I'm gonna hang out here for a bit and see what happens and decide if uh, I should move on for one more hour to the next campground Made some curry for lunch. Yeah. So I've just been chilling out here, having some tea after lunch. That white sign, by the way, is the other campground across there. About a 10 minute boat ride. Anyways, I'm sitting here. It's a pretty good spot. I can see pretty much everything, every come and go. If people are doing the circuit, uh, clockwise, they'll come out right there, and that family hasn't come, and nobody else has come. I have a feeling they just stopped at that first campground they stopped at, and probably just stayed there. Because it did get kind of windy, and they might have been nervous getting out there. Anyways, nobody's come that way. That's the way I came from. And just around that point right there would be heading into the other side of Blackett Lake. And so if anybody's doing the canoe circuit counterclockwise, they would come out right there. And nobody has come out there since I've been here this morning. So I pretty much am by myself out here. All right, just getting ready for the afternoon thunder showers potentially. Started to, started to caught up a bit as it does every afternoon in June. So I'm not going to risk it and go to the next campsite. I do not want to get caught out there in a thunderstorm because it's hard to find places to go on shore. A lot of it's very boggy. All right, well, because there's no bear hanging here, or bear bins, I've been scouring this island. I couldn't find anything. Anyways, here's what I rigged up. I had to climb that tree, which is a little bit dangerous because I don't want to get hurt out here. But... Uh, I, uh, I mean, a bear could climb it too, but basically I took all the food out of the bin, put it in a dry bag, because the dry bag should be pretty sealed to keep the smells in. And then I climbed the tree, got that rope up there, and... You know, if the bear stands on the lower side, it's pretty damn high. Anyways, should help. At the very least, I'll hear him. Try and chase him off. If one shows up. Let's hope not. Okay, just about to leave campsite number two. 7 a.m. A little chilly out this morning. Overcast. Uh, other than that, pretty good though, it's dry. Okay, so I just made it across Blackett Lake, the big part. Straight across there is an island with the campground. I was going to stop and have a rest there. And I was considering staying there really early on. But it was only about an hour and 15 minute paddle from my last place, so it's still pretty early. So, and there was somebody there actually. I didn't stop there, I just kept going and went across the lake and 
I'm looking for the portage somewhere around here, but I gotta check the shore. There's an old trap line cabin here, which is kind of cool. Uh, looks like it's still used in the winter, probably. Pretty neat place. Uh, trap line 1370. And that's the view they have out on the lake. So anyways, I'm just gonna look for the portage and then stay at a campground on the other side of the portage. Probably about another hour paddle out there. Portage about 1.6 kilometers. Okay, made it to the portage. It was just east of the cabin. East. I have to check that. I think it was east. Anyways, this is going to be interesting. A guy had told me that there are portage wheels here. Even if there are, holy crap. This is going to be an interesting portage. This is pretty muddy. But I can see that there's no portage wheels here. So I'm probably either going to have to use my own or walk to the other end and pick some up. 1.6 kilometers, which I think that's what I'm going to do. I might as well carry my backpack or something with me. Um, I guess the lighter I can make that canoe, the better, so it's probably not a bad thing that I'm gonna pack some stuff over my foot. So I'll get my bear spray, my bear bell, and get at her. So I'm just walking this portage trail. It's not too bad. I don't think my little wheels would do too well though. A guy I ran into said they have some of those really good carts. So I hope he wasn't lying. I guess even if he was, I'd still have to walk it and take some of this weight. But it's a nice cool day for this, for sure. So I, put, I, take it, I took the backpack and the blue dry bag and I'm carrying the yellow dry bag on my shoulders as well and again that's just to loosen or lessen the load I should say in the in the truck or the truck in the uh, canoe because this is going to be <coughs> a very interesting portage some of these spots I got mud coming up to my top of my boot almost. Well, ah, not the top. I, uh, it's a good thing I brought rubber boots. That's for sure. Don't leave home without them when you go canoeing. Well, I'm sure get my workout here. I just came up brutally hard hill. Uh, oh. Oh my god. That mug bar, hey, that mug, that mud bog at the start was nasty. And this hill I just came up, holy crap, that was nasty. It's hard to see it there, but anyways, I think that was the steepest hill though. So hopefully it gets a little better. Here on in, I do have three fallen trees. I'm gonna have to unload everything, and get the cart over, and reload it. Oh, this trail isn't used much. I mean, with two people, it'd be difficult. With one, holy crap! Anyhow, don't really have a choice at this point. Well. I am thankful for one thing. Actually, I'm thankful for three things. I'm thankful that it's not a blazing hot day. I'm thankful 
that it's not pouring rain. And I'm thankful that there's pretty much no mosquitoes. Ugh. Because that, I mean, I could see how bad this would be in the summer. But anyways, I would not recommend this for people with kids. I mean, if I had a lighter canoe, I'd probably be, be easier just to shuttle back and forth a couple of times and then carry a canoe a third time or something. I don't know. Wow. That's all I can say is, wow. Okay, I'll have to just uh, drag the canoe through the mud for the last 50 meters. There's no way those tires are gonna get through there. This is a bit of a challenge here too. As soon as you step on all these things, they sink. So I'm gonna have to load up the canoe, I guess, and kind of keep one foot in and one foot out. Or the other option, I guess, is to put on my sandals, roll up my pants. Kind of a mess anyways. Wow, I'm glad I got that over with. I didn't save that till tomorrow. I mean, hell, it's not even, it's not even noon yet. All right, well, I'm sure glad to get that over with. I had to kind of, oh, yeah, there's a dead fish right there. I had to kind of float it on the side there, and get it out here. So I wanted to keep my boots on. Anyways, I got about an hour paddle to to the campground. I hope no one's there because there's no other campground on this lake. And that took an hour and a half that portage just pulling the boat. So that doesn't include the trip I made to pick up the cart. So that uh, that was a pretty brutal 1.6 kilometers. So the MacGuffin Lake campground was in a deciduous forest and kind of overgrown. I was really freaked out about bears at this one as it's on the mainland as well. And I knew for certain that there was nobody else on this lake. Um, this is the only campground. So I pitched my tent on the dock. It did rain and it was windy all night. So the dock was floating around, but I slept pretty good. And I managed to get a pretty big fire going at this site too. So it turned out being pretty good. All right, doing the potage from McGuffin Lake back to Jackson Lake. And this is kind of how it rolls. 600 meters. Just working my way through all the lagoons back to Jackson Lake. And I can see I'm going to have to sludge through this crap. Ugh. I've decided to have a bath here. Sun's out. I stink. Nice sandy beach. Good spot. So here I'm at the Jackson Lake Peninsula Campground, the final campground night four of the trip. Okay, so I left camp at about 4.30 in the morning because so I went to get up and pee. It was dead calm and I have a... I'm not raining. Got my campsite back there somewhere. And uh, I have a big piece of lake to get across, but 1.5k, so at the angle I'm going. So I thought I'd take advantage. Okay, got across the lake to uh, make some breakfast. Still not raining, still dead calm, so it's good. Happy to be where I'm at. <laughs> 